Good afternoon, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before we go through the webinar. If you have any colleagues or associates that weren't able to make this webinar today, it is going to be recorded and will be posted to our Department of Labor website, um, typically within 48 hours. Um, as you have questions throughout the webinar, please enter those into the chat. And then at the end of the presentation, we will go through and, um, and answer those questions you may have. And lastly, as one reminder, um, this grant is applicable only to organizations that have two um, of the licenses for child care and preschool underneath the Department of Health and Human Services. That's a licensed child care center and a licensed preschool. So those family child care home and school age only centers are unfortunately not eligible for this program. With that said, we'll get started. Today we're going to be talking about um, the Teachers Recruitment and Retention Grant, also referred to as TURG, um, but specifically the child care and early, early childhood education components of the program. Um, this entire presentation is an overview of the program design and delivery of funds allocated to the Nebraska Department of Labor earlier this spring under LB 1014. Some background on the American Rescue Plan Act. It created what was called the Coronavirus State Fiscal Recovery Fund, um, which was to provide states with resources to respond to the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, that state recovery fund has four objectives. The first of which is to respond to COVID-19 and its negative impact on households, small businesses, nonprofits, and specific industries. Second objective is to provide better wages to essential workers. The third objective is to assist underemployed and unemployed individuals achieve reemployment. And lastly, objective four is to create retention incentives. And objective four is primarily um, what's demonstrated the way this grant is designed. So this grant will be delivering premium pay um, to eligible occupations. Um, once they've completed a certain period of retention with the applicant employer. So a quick summary of LB 1014, this bill appropriated $10 million in the state relief funds to the Nebraska Department of Labor for workforce training programs administered by the department and distributed through the recommendations of the Nebraska Worker Training Board. If you're not familiar with the Nebraska Worker Training Board, this program has been around for decades, um, and it's a state-funded grant opportunity um, through which employers can apply for, for grants that will help conduct em, uh, employee training and also recruitment of workers to Nebraska. Um, there is a seven members of that board um, that meets quarterly to review applications received. Um, and so, the way these ARPA programs are designed as we're required by the state legislature um, is to make uh, determinations on grant awards through that worker training board. This is a kind of a graphic illustration of the flow of funds. Um, so the LB 1014 funds, they are awarded to the department um, through a Nebraska Training and Support Cash Fund. Um, and the Nebraska Training and Support Cash Fund has two primary responsibilities, first of which is to administer the Nebraska Worker Training Program, and the second is to uh, conduct payments of unemployment insurance benefits through the Unemployment Benefits Account as solvent. Um, but the funds um, allocated to us under ARPA are administered under the Nebraska Worker Training Program, and it has three key objectives, which is the pu public and private job training programs, recruitment and retention of workers in Nebraska, and also training new employees of expanding businesses. So with the $10 million the Department of Labor received under LB 1014, we created three specific programs, and then the fourth program is kind of a, just a contingency, but we don't expect to use it. Um, so today we're talking about program one, which is a teacher recruitment and retention grant. 
A description of this program is a premium pay grant, and we initially have budgeted $4 million to this program. The second program is a nursing recruitment and retention grant. It's also a premium pay grant, and we have budgeted eight of our, four of our $10 million to that program. So programs one and two are both very, very similar, just impacting different occupations. The third program is the Workforce Development Grant. Um, and it's, a, it's an employment and training and employee recruitment grant that's very similar to our traditional state worker training grants. The only, the only exceptions being there are some additional eligibility requirements for ARPA based on um, the workers to be trained or recruited. They have to meet a certain definition of, of an eligible population under ARPA. Um, however, we don't need to worry about those eligible populations with the, the teacher's recruitment grant and the nursing grant. Um, because it's based solely off of the occupation of the worker. Program four um, is a transfer to unemplo the Unemployment Trust Fund. Uh, we allocated zero dollars to this program. Um, I think it's incredibly unlikely given the level of interest that we've had in all three of these programs with our initial webinars um, that this would happen at all. But if for some reason we have money that's unobligated, um, meaning we haven't made these awards to recipients. Um, the balance that we have left can be transferred to our state trust fund with the intention being we don't return that money to the federal government. Um, so again, that's incredibly unlikely to happen, but we did build that in as a contingency. One item to note, uh, the Nebraska Worker Training Board is allowed to reallocate funds amongst the, the teaching, nursing, and workforce development grants if the amount of approved grant applications received on or before October 2nd, 2023 in one of the program core categories is less than the amount of funds initially allocated. So there is some flexibility to move, move funds within these three key programs. So an overview of the teachers recruitment retention grant $4 million allocated for grants to educational employers and child care providers to provide premium pay to support the recruitment and retention of, and this is where we come into the two different categories. The first category is uh, middle and high school educators in the subject areas of math, science, and career and technical education. Um, so we had an early webinar that focused specifically in that category of the, of the teacher's recruitment retention grant. Category two is what we're here to talk about today. That's the child care and early childhood education. So when talking about eligibility for those programs, it's, it's easier to understand if we break it down into three different categories for eligibility. There's the applicant eligibility requirements, and that's, you know, simply that's the folks that are attending this webinar are probably the ones that are going to be applying on behalf of their organization. And so that's eligibility requirements for those in, those in attendance today. There's a different, set of, a different set of eligibility requirements for the premium pay position themselves. And then lastly, there are um, eligibility requirements for the actual employee um, who's going to be receiving that bonus payment at the end of the grant. So applicant eligibility requirements. The applicant must be a child care center or preschool facility licensed by the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services. And again, this grant unfortunately does not apply to the family child care or the school age only child care licensures. The applicants must have experienced challenges hiring or retaining teachers due to the COVID-19 pandemic and also demonstrate a commitment to provide training and professional development um, throughout the life cycle of the grant. Looking at the eligibility requirements for the premium pay positions themselves. So for the, for the child care and preschool grants, these positions must um, meet the following criteria. The positions must provide in-person child care or early childhood education services. And secondly, the services must be provided at a child, called child care center or preschool facility appropriately licensed by the, the Department of Health and Human Services. 
And then lastly, looking at the eligibility for premium pay recipients, so the employees benefiting from this program, they must begin working in that position no later than September 1st of next year. They must remain working in that position with the same employer through the premium pay certification date of January 9th, 2024. So that period between September 1st of 2023 and January 9th, 2024 is what we can consider the retention period. So we're looking at you know, about four months of retention with the employer. As of the premium pay certification date, which is January 9th of 2024, um, uh, I'm sorry, we can disregard this. This is for the educational grants. Um, so we can disregard paragraph three. Um, one thing to note for the for all teachers recruitment and retention grants, uh, that the, in, the individual workers pay from 2023 uh, should not be more than $78,165 which is 150% of the Nebraska state average wage. Um, and this is a requirement of ARPA in general. This is not something that uh, the Department of Labor added as an additional requirement. So looking at pay scales, there's two, you know, anybody that's eligible for a, a, a TRRG grant, um, depending on the time that they are hired by the employer, um, will depend on how much of a bonus payment they'll, they'll end up getting. So we've kind of broken it down into tier one and tier two positions. So any worker um, that is hired and into that position on or before December 31st of this year, they will receive $2,500 as, as an incentive payment after that retention period. Um, and just to clarify, um, organizations that currently have employees in those positions, they absolutely count. These do not have to be new positions created. It can apply to incumbent workers with the company. And then we have the tier two. Um, so individuals that are hired between January 1st to September 1st of 2023, they're eligible for the tier two incentive payment, which is $1,250. So we have tier one and tier two based on the date um, that that employee is confirmed to be employed by the applicant organization. So we'll walk through the application process here. There's going to be some dates mentioned. Um, don't be too concerned about memorizing those. I do have a, a graphic timeline um, that I'll show in a few slides that'll make things look a, a much more clear. So how the application process is going to unfold. Applicants will apply for the award using the application form provided by the Department of Labor, which will be located um, on our website, which is departmentoflabor.nebraska.gov. These applications function as a request to reserve a specific amount of grant funds per applicant. So within this digital application form, um, it requires the applicant to answer and attest to a series of questions relevant to the program eligibility and design such as information about each premium pay eligible position requested, including the amount requested for each position, and if the position is vacant or occupied at the time of application. Um, today, actually, I completed the draft of uh, the application user guide for the specifically to the TRRG grants, and it is a step-by-step -step guideline on when this application period goes live that applicants can use to assist them in filling out the application. However, if you do have any questions, um, please contact the department directly at ndol.arpa.nebraska.gov. Um, that is the primary point of contact for additional questions for this grant. Moving along in the application timeline. So if all funds are not reserved by January 1st of 2023, um, the ARPA guidelines may be amended to expand program eligibility. Um, so there's a potential that the eligible licensures could expand. Um, it's not a guarantee, but we do have that built into the program if funds are not reserved by January 1st of next year. And then the application period will end no later than October 2nd of 2023. So the process, what happens after an application has been submitted to the department 
Um, this is modeled specifically after what the Nebraska Worker Training Program and the board has done in the past, which, which we were required to do under the, the authorizing legislation of LB 1014. So an evaluation committee, which is designated by the Commissioner of Labor, will review applications on a rolling basis to verify eligibility requirements of the application and the premium pay positions. Based on the review of the evaluation committee, and the availability of allocated funds, the commissioner will make recommendations for awards to the Nebraska Worker Training Board, giving priority to eligible applications filed earliest. The board will then review the commissioner's recommended awards for compliance with the program guidelines. The board will then vote on awards recommended by the commissioner during its scheduled quarterly meetings or more frequently if determined necessary. Once approved by the board, Initial award notifications will be issued to recipient employers identifying the amount of premium pay that the department has reserved, the positions for which the premium pay has been reserved, and the amount of premium pay reserved for each, for each position. Applications that are determined ineligible or not approved by the board will also be notified accordingly. So, Successful applicants um, do have some reporting requirements. Um, so quarterly reports, uh, the employer must submit to NDOL within 15 days of the end of each calendar quarter using a form and method prescribed by the department. These reports will identify whether the premium pay eligible position was filled or vacant during that quarter. For the filled positions, employers will provide information about the worker in the position as specified by the department. It's important to note recipients who do not submit their quarterly reports in a timely fashion um, may be subject to award deobligation or termination. Now, the intent right now is, um, you know, so we're creating an online application portal for this program. And we also are going to build in a function where these quarterly reports and any other inf documentation to submit to the department, it will be submitted digitally through a website, and that's to reduce email communication and try and keep things as organized as possible for all parties. The last report, um, so on or before January 15th of 2024, so about a week after that certification date of January 9th, each recipient employer must submit a certification form in the manner prescribed by the department. This form will be utilized to verify the recipient has met eligibility requirements as of the premium paid certification date and throughout the retention period. Um, this form is going to include reporting information and documentation um, to determine that the total amount of eligible premium pay um, and what if there's any discrepancy between what the initial obligation was awarded to the company and throughout the retention period if we had workers that left um, or other things happened. Um, those funds would then be obligated to a different purpose. So after January 15th, when the department receives certification reports, we'll be issuing those final award, notice, final award notices, and that will tell you as the applicant and the grant recipient um, the total amount of funds that are going to be paid to you um, and that it needs to be paid to each of the um, essential workers. So after you receive that final award notice, funds will be transferred to you um, to fund premium pay for the approved workers within your organization. One item to note, the transfer of funds between the state and the recipient employer will occur only through electronic funds transfer. Um, so part of the award process is you will be required to have a W-9 on file with state accounting. Um, it's a very easy process, but it will make processing payments and transferring funds a lot easier. We want to avoid paper checks at all costs. And once you as the recipient employer have received that money from the department, you are then expected to pay that lump sum premium payment to each of the eligible worker as specified in the final award notice. Um, we have got questions, you know, from a financial perspective about how this income is to be handled. Um, Premium pay wages must be in addition to and not replace compensation the worker would have otherwise received. These payments are taxable as wage income. 
Uh, we encourage employers to treat the premium pay earned by the employee just as they would with other income and withhold from additional pay any required taxes as usual. So here's the timeline I mentioned earlier. Um, there are a lot of moving parts and there also, you know, we have three different programs with different timelines. Um, so beginning on the left, October 1st, 2022, um, that was our goal for the application period to begin. Um, I can say that we've made faster progress than I anticipated and it's likely that it will open up before um, October 1st of this year. Um, however, we will announce the date that that application portal will go live um, at least a week to 10 days in advance. That will be a, a press release made to the public and distributed as thoroughly as possible um, so applicants have time to familiarize themselves with the grant application process before logging into the system to submit it. Um, if you go and look at our, our Department of Labor website right now under our ARPA grant page, we have um, a series of materials accessible. They include the PowerPoints, they include the webinar recordings um, for the Workforce Development Grant. We will shortly have an Eligible Population Determination Assistance Guide. Uh, but before that grant period goes live, we will also have blank copies of what the application looks like, as well as the application user guide, which breaks it down step by step. So all the information will be available to the public in advance of the portal going live. Um, and, you know, we kind of talked about these dates going throughout the presentation earlier, but, um, you know, December 31st, that is a deadline, that's kind of the first deadline, and that's when Tier 1 positions need to be filled. And those Tier 1 positions are employees that are eligible to receive $2,500 as a bonus. Uh, our next date is January 1st of 2023, that's when we can, the board can amend the guidelines if uh, unreserved funds exist. September 1st of 2023, that is when the Tier 2 positions must be filled, and those, those Tier 2 employees are eligible for $1,250. On October 2nd of 2023, the application period will formally end. Uh, between September 1st of 2023 and January 9th of 2024, that is the retention period I've mentioned before. Um, so that is a consecutive period of time that that worker has to be employed with the applicant to be eligible for the premium pay upon the premium pay certification date. And then lastly, January 15, 2024, those certification reports um, from the grant recipients are due to the department. After we receive those reports, um, we'll be making the final award notifications and then processing payments to all grant recipients. So like any other federal and state grant, there are elements of quality control um, that are a requirement for successful applicants. So as a condition of the award, um, teachers, recruitment, or retention grant recipients must agree to cooperate with any quality control activities, which uh, we kind of define as monitoring, auditing, or other oversight activities, um, as determined by the Department of Labor, Labor or any other lawful entity. So this might be United States Department of Labor, it might be our state auditors. Um, there is that chance that um, if you are a successful applicant at some point, um, you know, you'll be randomly selected to go through an audit. And that's something that's required of all state and federal grants. Just want to make sure that everyone who's interested is aware that is a requirement. And these quality control activities may occur from the date the application until December 31st of 2026. So this is a very long-term grant. Um, all of our funds have to be obligated by December 31st of 2024, um, but the monitoring and quality control can go on until December 31st of 2026. So here is some frequently asked questions that we've received already. Um, and please, if you have any questions um, that aren't addressed here, please put them in the chat um, and that'll help us um, expand this FAQ document. So we've kind of went over this multiple times. Um, what facility licenses are eligible for child care and early childhood education providers? So those are facilities, licenses, child care centers, or preschools. Um, 
And once again, those family, child care, home one, two, and school age only licensures are not eligible, unfortunately. Must the premium pay eligible position be full time? Yes, that is a requirement under ARPA. Are management positions considered to provide in-person services and eligible for premium pay? Yes, a management position that supervises or manages employees who are providing in-person child care or early childhood education services is considered eligible. So managers, direct supervisors are, can be considered eligible. Will the department create a wait list so funds that are initially obligated can be redistributed if requirements for payment are not met? Yes. So we will continue to accept all applications once funds have been allocated to the program. Um, and we'll, we will be creating a waiting list up until the application deadline date. So that's October 2nd of 2023. Um, if additional funds become available, awards will be made to employers on this waiting list, starting with those employers who filed their application first. Um, so, you know, we're expecting, you know, there is going to be probably several instances where we, you know, we, we grant um, funding for 10, um, you know, preschool educators, um, but only seven of those 10 actually complete their retention period. So those funds for those three that aren't eligible, um, those funds will be collected and awarded to applications on the waiting list. And lastly, can an organization apply and receive for funding under multiple ARPA programs, such as the Teachers Recruitment Grant and the Workforce Development Grant? The answer is yes. So as long as the, the applicant organization meets the eligibility criteria for the respective ARPA program, you may apply and receive funding through multiple ARPA programs. So, um, you know, a child care center or a preschool could apply for this premium pay for their, for their employees. And they could also apply and receive funds for workforce development grant to enhance training and other other activities of that program. Um, so now we'll get into some questions and answers. I see a couple in the chat. Um, is there a standard definition for full time? That's a great question. Um, so there's nothing in state statute that outlines what full time is. Um, for child care centers and preschools. So um, what we're operating under now is 40 hours a week is considered full time. Um, we do have a slight variation for the nursing grant. Um, there is an industry standard within healthcare that 36 hours is considered full time. Um, but for the child care and early childhood education grants, 40 hours is considered full time. The second question I have is when will the grant when will the grant disperse funds at the time of the award or after the retention period? Yes, so the funds, um, the funds will be transferred to the, to the employer after the retention period is over and we've received the certification report. So what that initial award obligation is saying is that we've reserved, let's say, $10,000 for X, Y, and Z positions with your organization. That's simply reservations of funds. We will disperse the amount after the retention period is complete and we've received the retention, uh, I'm sorry, the premium pay certification report. So I don't see any other questions here in the chat. Um, if, if at any time you or, yes, yeah, so full time, um, that's also a very good question, interpreting what full time is. So. Um, full time, I would say, is scheduled for 40 hours of work a week. Now, that means, you know, if someone's out sick or on vacation, we can't hold that against an employee. Um, so they should, it, the position should be a position designated for full time employment with 40 hours a week. Okay, another question came in. So the $4 million is shared between early childhood and elementary schools. Is there potential for funding to run out? Um, so yes, the $4 million is shared between the middle and high school um, programs and then also the, the child care and preschool programs. So, you know, it just depends on the in level of interest we get. Um, but yes, there is, a, there is a chance that this funding, this $4 million will be obligated quickly. Um, however, as I mentioned before, there is a wait list 
Um, and there is possibilities um, that more funds could potentially be awarded to the department under these programs at a future date. Um, that's not a guarantee, but that is a potential. But, you know, we encourage, you know, if anyone applies and funds have already been obligated to definitely agree to be on that wait list because you could receive funding. As a concluding comment, um, again, if you have any questions, please contact us at that ndol.arpa.nebraska.gov inbox. Um, please uh, go ahead and regularly monitor our website at dol.nebraska.gov. Um, we will be continuing to upload more resources as we get closer to the application period begin date. Um, and then once again, seven to 10 days before we open the application period, we will be making a formal press release to the public informing um, all stakeholders in these various programs of when the portal will go live. Um, so also please keep an eye out for that announcement. Um, it will be shared, you know, through different news outlets. Um, but as a fail safe, please continue to monitor our website. Um, with no other questions, again, this is a recorded webinar. This will be posted on our website if there's others within your organization that are interested, unable to attend, or if you have colleagues you'd like to share this information with. Um, so thank you for joining us this afternoon. We appreciate your interest in this program. Um, and we do hope to see a lot of applications from this group um, and, you know, provide that premium pay to those essential workers that have been impacted by COVID-19. So thank you, and we'll go ahead and conclude the webinar there.